What's up guys, it's Prof Smoke. Today I'm going to be painting this Pathfinder Battles Hydra from WizKids. For this project I'm using a Games Workshop Warhammer 40k paint set. Here's all the colors that come in that paint set. I'm also going to be using some other products, but I'll list those in the video later, so don't worry. For this project I'm going for an iridescent paint job. Iridescence is a prismatic lighting effect based on the perspective that it's viewed from. When you look at a bubble, you'll kind of see all these colors inside of it, and depending on the angle you're looking at the bubble from, you'll see different colors. Many insects also have iridescent carapaces, but we'll show some examples later. To begin, I'm covering the entire base of our figure with technical astro granite. That's going to give it a really nice rocky texture and just kind of make everything feel natural and original. For the base coat of this, I'm using Retributor Armor. It's a really shiny color of gold as you can see. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow small slivers of gold to peek out between each individual scale and the shininess is really going to help our lighting effect play out later on. Before I forget, the adhesive that I used to stick the figure to the base is E6000. It's a transparent adhesive, very versatile, and I used a NECA figure display stand. Now we'll give the base a quick wash with Agrax Earthshade. Now I'm going to dry brush Abaddon Black onto all of the scales. This is going to give us a really nice contrast, give us a little bit of shade. The reason I did this was that I was worried if I didn't put black into this figure it was going to be way too bright. I'm really happy that I did that layer of black. Since this figure has so many scales and it would take a super long time to do an iridescent paint job on every single scale, I decided to do a test run on a small section to make sure that I not only like the iridescent effect, but I understand how to do the iridescent effect here. I'm going to quickly explain our iridescent paint job so we have everyone on the same page. Our base coat is gold. Now after we put down our gold base coat, we dry brushed black over top of it so the gold only really shows on the edges of each individual scale, giving us a nice lighting effect and a nice contrast with the black. After that, we used red on just the tip of the scale. It's our focal point. Everything kind of revolves around the red. Now we're overlapping the black paint with the blue paint so only a sliver of the black shows through. And then we'll take the green paint and overlap the blue paint just like we did with the black paint, although we're going to leave way more blue paint showing. Now the final step is that we're going to take yellow paint and we're going to paint a very thin line between the red and the green paint. Iridescence is a perspective-based lighting effect. That means that as we rotate around the scale, the colors inside would shift based on the po focal point. I like to think of our red portion as the focal point. So as we rotate, the red kind of moves along the border of the scale and all of the colors fall around the red. To really understand this iridescent effect, I took a look at some reference images. Now this is from the Netflix film, The Yin Yang Master, Dream of Eternity. At an hour and 36 minutes into this film, a giant snake with iridescent scales pops out and fights a bunch of people. It's really cool. That, this is what inspired me to do this iridescent paint job, and it has a bunch of different angles to view iridescence from. It really helped me understand how iridescence works. I also used this reference image of this snake for the necks of the hydra for some of it. For the blue, I'm doing a dry brush over all the scales, just like with the black, but a little bit lighter. Moving into the red, we're just simply trying to get the underside in the tip of each individual scale with red. 
I also kind of went freestyle on the heads with each color too, which I thought was really cool. Doing this project, I ended up wearing through so many fine detail brushes, doing all these tiny little speckles and dabs. I ended up having to buy a second The Army Painter brand brush set. Now the brush set that I got has these brushes that are called the Psycho. They're super, super tiny. I used mostly the Psycho brushes and the Insane Detail brushes. And yes, I am crazy after finishing this project. While we're painting the green on, I'm just kind of trying to overlap any extra blue or red pretty much if there's too much blue or too much red we're trying to overlap them and if not we're just cradling the green right up against the red in a nice shape and trying to create a smooth transition from the blue to the green. Moving on to the Everland Sunset Yellow, we're trying to paint in as thin of lines as possible, and the entire job of our yellow paint is that it goes between green and red. Anywhere green is touching red, we want to put a little line of yellow to just separate them. The yellow paint really helps to reinforce the idea that each individual scale is being hit with light and that light is reflecting off of it. I think that the yellow helps tie this entire thing together before the yellow versus after the yellow is like day and night. It's important that we clean up the stomach and the chest and the undersides of the necks using our retributor armor. We want to define the edge of each of these thick armory segments and just really clean everything up. Next I'm going to hit all these sections with a dry brushing of Corax White. I'm going from bottom to top, I'm trying to give it the illusion that it's more of a skin-like texture and less of a hard armory metallic. And I'm just doing lines of Retributor Armor to give some shading. Now we're just going to quickly touch up the insides of the mouth for any spillover from previous layers. Now the final step is to paint the spines. As you can see, I'm starting with white on the spines. I thought that it would be nice to have a really bright spine on there. And when I think of a hydra, I always think of like a whitish or yellowish spine. So it just seemed like the, you know, the obvious place to start. During this step, I decided to not only dry brush the spines with Retributor Armor, but to dry brush pretty much the entire thing top down with Retributor Armor to give the illusion that the whole thing is getting hit with light from above. When I was deciding what color to do for the eyes, I wanted there to be a huge contrast from the sculpture, and since there were so many colors it was hard, but I decided that since blue is the opposite of gold, I would do some really nice baby blues for my puppy here. After I got the baby blue down, I used some darker blue for the pupils. I tried to use horizontal rectangular pupils. I was really, really happy with how they came out. For this step, I did a top-down dry brushing gradient of three different folk art metallic paints. This layer is taking our lighting effect to the next level everywhere that we just dry brushed Retributor Armor or where we have white is just soaking these new colors up and we're just creating a very nice gradient while coloring the spine. 
for the final step of painting the Hydra, I did two layers of Liquitex iridescent medium. You can mix it with paint or use it at the end. It pretty much just adds a reflective opalescent shine over the whole figure. It's awesome. Now that we have our super awesome figure painted, we can move on to basing. The first thing I'm going to do for our base is put a very, very thick layer of agrellin earth on it. That's a crackle paint. When it dries, it gets cracks in it like some really dry earth. Once that layer dries, we're going to do a wash of Agrax earth shade. All this is going to do is help our dirt not be one single color. It adds a little shade. Then I did a dry brushing of Retributor armor on the entire base. Once we have this done, we can begin super gluing down random bits and bobs onto our base to kind of add some interest and make the base not feel so empty. I'm using tufts from my Citadel basing set, some yellow Army Painter brand flowers, and some random rocks I had laying around. I'm dry brushing the rocks with Retributor Armor Gold as well. The idea behind dry brushing the base and these rocks with gold is to make the eyeball think that light is reflecting off of the gold on the Hydra onto this base around it. It's kind of a glow effect um, to a lesser degree. I think it does a really good job of helping make the Hydra and the base part of each other. The Hydra really seems at home, and I kind of tried to do some of these flowers poking out from underneath the Hydra, like the Hydra's smashing them by moving through and stuff like that. Just cool little details that I think add a lot to the figure. In there, I did a nice crystal of fool's gold, the treasure that the Hydra is protecting. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so happy with how this finished project came out. You can see every individual color that was put down. You can see the gold shining through and the opalescent medium, the iridescent medium really helped to cover up the gold just enough where you almost don't know you're seeing the gold it's the weirdest thing but i'm just so happy with how this came out for my sixth miniature ever i'm just super super proud it's beautiful Thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to hear any suggestions you have for future videos in the comments below. Please like and subscribe so you can see all my new videos. I'm going to make some awesome stuff. Thank you so much.